In this video, we'll be looking at how stars are classified and how they change over time. We're going to begin by talking about star characteristics. There are five different categories that we classify stars according to. Their color, their age, their size, their luminosity, and their temperature. Luminosity is a measurement of how much light stars give off. It's really star's brightness. This is related to the fusion reaction occurring inside a star that generates the light. Different temperatures will result in different luminosities. Color is a very interesting distinction amongst stars. In the universe, color determines how much heat you are producing and what type of fusion reaction that's going on inside. Color ranges in stars from blue to blue-white to white to yellow to orange to orange-red to red. Our sun is a yellow star. Temperature is closely related to color. In our universe, temperature will determine what color you are. The hottest colors in the universe are blue and white. That is opposite to what we are taught and what we see in advertising in everyday life. Usually we see blue as a cooler color, as a kind of cold. Blue stars emit temperatures greater than 30,000 degrees Kelvin. That's about three times the temperature of our sun. Red stars emit temperatures about 2,500 Kelvin which is one-third the temperature of our sun. So red is actually the cooler color in the universe. To help understand these characteristics more easily, in our reference table on page 15, we have this chart. This chart is titled Characteristics of Stars. We can use this chart to explore star characteristics and the effects they have on star properties. If you look carefully, there are different dots. Those dots are meant to represent stars, but this chart does not represent all the stars we have discovered. It's just a model. Let's take a look at our first area in the chart, starting on the uh, lower right-hand side. We have our smaller stars, so any, any, anywhere in this um, strip from left to right, those are our smaller stars. Notice the, the term dwarfs. Um, anything in this area is considered to be a smaller star. Um, as we move up the table, we get to our massive stars. These are stars larger than our sun. All right. Notice how the sun is actually located somewhere in the middle. And as I had described earlier in a previous video, our sun is an average size star. So that uh, positioning of the sun kind of reinforces that. Staying focused on the lower right-hand corner, we have lower temperatures, 2,000 degrees Kelvin. As we travel to the left, our temperatures increase to 30,000 Kelvin. So that means as we track from right to left across the entire chart, we're going from lower temperatures to higher temperatures. Correlated with that, our color scheme down at the bottom, we have our cooler colors like red, on the right hand side of the table and then as we travel to the left we have our bluer colors which are hotter. So moving from right to left across the whole of the table we go from red to blue and that also emphasizes the temperature which is cooler on the right hotter on the left. And finally our last property over on the left hand side starting in the lower left hand corner we have dimmer stars, stars that show uh, a brightness lower than our sun. All the numbers here for luminosity are referenced to the number one, which is the value of our sun. Our sun is the uh, brightest object in our sky, so to speak, so that gets a value, a luminosity equal to one. And other stars uh, that, are in our, that are in space are ranked accordingly. So lower left-hand corner, dimmer stars as we travel up the chart we get brighter stars. Okay, stars like our sun are located on this green line 
right? Meant to help you recognize that that has a uh, luminosity equal to one. So a star like uh, Pollux or a star like Polaris um, or Sirius, they all are brighter than our sun because they're above that green line. And stars like Barnard Star or Proxima Centauri or Procyon B, those are all lower luminosities because they're below this line. As a general rule, when we look at that chart, hotter stars tend to be more luminous than cooler stars, meaning the hotter you are, the more uh, bright you are. Um, and then also, most stars are in the main sequence. The main sequence is that band running kind of diagonally across this chart. Now let's start there. The main sequence are stars that are average sized and they're in an early stage of their development, meaning they were recently, and that term is relative, but recently created. Other groups of stars on the table, we have our supergiants, which is kind of an intermediate stage, but very few stars get to be supergiants. This is, these are stars that are enormous in size. They're 10,000 times the brightness of the sun. And they all tend to have very short lifespans because they burn so hot. There are also an, giants, which is another intermediate stage. And they're about 1,000 times as bright as our sun. And um, stars that you find in the giant phase tend to be a little bit older um, than stars in the supergiant phase. And then finally, the last stage, which is down here, the white dwarfs. These are all very late stage stars. We're going to learn about this in a second, but in the process of a star's life, this is usually the last step in a typical star's existence. Uh, some white dwarfs are even smaller than the Earth. No matter what, because they're white, they burn very, very hot. But unfortunately, they're not very luminous. They don't really show up uh, in the sky. So a good question to ask would be, how long do stars live? The lifetime of a star is highly dependent on the star's mass. More massive stars live shorter lives. Smaller stars have longer lives. Two pathways. Um, for stars. We're going to begin with the nebula because that's where all stars really are created from. But if we had a star that was average in size, like our sun, an average mass sun on the main sequence, it's going to start as a protostar, mature, and eventually become a main sequence star. And at some point, it's going to stop producing helium and start using that helium to make carbon, the next step in the fusion process. And in that case, it's going to swell to what's called a red giant. And at some point, as a red giant, the forces of gravity can't hold it together any longer. It's going to erupt or explode into a planetary nebula. Think about that term, a planetary nebula. It's a nebula for planets, meaning it has the materials necessary for building planets. And eventually, what's ever left, the inner core, the materials that are still going through the process of fusion where it's the hottest are going to become a white dwarf. That's the last stage. Um, that's a typical size star. Let's talk about a really big star, a high mass star. So instead of going to the main sequence, a high mass star is going to skip all the way to the supergiant phase. This is a red supergiant. could easily be a blue supergiant or a white supergiant. Eventually, and a, and a much shorter amount of time, this red supergiant is going to explode in a, in a beautiful process known as a supernova. And that ejects a lot of material out into space. What's left after a supernova, because this was such a big star, is a very dense core. And that dense core, under the right circumstances, could become a neutron star. Now, a neutron star we don't see, but we can detect. Um, they don't emit light, but they're highly dense gravitational forces, so you can see the bending of light uh, around them as a result. Um, another option, and if this is a really super massive star, is it can become a black hole. Now, we don't know a lot about black holes because we can't see them and we can't really go to them, 
but what we do know is that they are the result of very large stars that have gone through the supernova phase. And really what's left, what's uh, remaining, is this enormous core. And because it's so big, the, it takes gravity and it pulls gravity, it pulls with gravity so hard that it bends light. And that's how we find them. Wherever we see light kind of bending or changing direction or not uh, running the way it should with the right lens on a telescope, that's where we know black holes exist. So a great question would be, well, we have an average size star, our sun. What's going to happen to it? Right? Our sun is going through the process of um, changing. So right now, our sun is about 4.5 billion years old in its 10-year life. So it's, it's about middle-aged. It's a middle-aged sun. In the next 2 billion years, our sun will swell to a red giant. And that process will um, cause the sun to swell and grow and engulf the inner planets. So Earth is out of the picture at this point. And then by 10 billion years, our sun is going to explode, right? Go through that uh, planetary nebula stage and shed its outer layers. And all that outer material is going to go off into space to become probably other planets, maybe other stars. But what's left, the remaining core, the material left over, will form a white dwarf. And that will be the last stage of our sun. So if I'm tra tracking our sun here, if I track our sun on our characteristics of stars chart, there's our sun in the uh, middle of our chart. It's going to remain in main sequence star for another 2 billion years, eventually swell to a red giant phase. And then after that, it will become a white dwarf. The video that follows will show you how that process will take place.